In this video, we're going to introduce oxidative phosphorylation and discuss the electron transfer chain. So, so far, from glycolysis in the citric acid cycle, we've produced a few molecules of ATP and GTP, but the bulk of the ATP production actually occurs in oxidative phosphorylation, which essentially is using the NADH and FADH2 that have been produced from glycolysis and the Krebs cycle, oxidizing them to produce a proton gradient that is used to produce ATP. Now, you should note that this is a two-step process. In the first step, that uses the electron transport chain to produce a proton gradient. In the second step, we're going to use ATP synthase, which uses that proton gradient to produce ATP. So in this video, we're going to talk about the electron transport chain. In the next video, we'll talk about ATP synthase. So in the electron transport chain, the electrons from NADH and FADH2 are passed through a series of electron carriers and eventually to oxygen to form water. So essentially, we're carrying out a number of oxidation reactions to release energy from NADH and FADH2. This energy is captured in the form of a proton gradient that as the electrons are traveling through these electron carriers, protons are being pumped from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space. And in this diagram, you can see a schematic of how the electron transport chain works. We have four complexes, one, two, three, and four. And there are two pathways. One is with NADH, which uses complexes one, three, and four. And the second pathway is for FADH2, which uses complexes two, three, and four. So as electrons are transferred from NADH and FADH2 ultimately to oxygen, you can see how protons are prompt from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space. Let's now go through the complexes one by one. Complex one is NADH dehydrogenase. As I mentioned, this is where NADH enters the electron transport chain. So it will oxidize NADH to NAD+, and it will take the electrons and give them to ubiquinone and reduce it to ubiquinol. Now you should know that ubiquinone is the oxidized form of coenzyme Q, and ubiquinol is the reduced form of coenzyme Q. So in a number of different sources, you'll find that they discuss how the electrons from NADH are transferred to coenzyme Q, but it's really the same thing. And here, two electrons are transferred from NADH to ubiquinone. So essentially, both NADH and ubiquinone are two electron carriers. Each molecule can carry two electrons. And we pump four protons from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space. We can now talk about complex two, which is succinate dehydrogenase. As we discussed, succinate dehydrogenase is the only enzyme that participates in both the citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain. In the citric acid cycle, succinate dehydrogenase catalyzes the oxidation of succinate to fumarate and the reduction of FAD to FADH2. In the electron transport chain, succinate dehydrogenase will oxidize FADH2 to FAD and it will reduce ubiquinone to ubiquinol. So what you'll notice is that complex one and complex two both produce ubiquinol, which then continues on to complex three. So that's why there's two different pathways. They both produce the same product. It's just a matter of which substrate do they use. Complex one uses NADH, complex two uses FADH2. Now, in complex two, two electrons are transferred from FADH2 to ubiquinone. So again, these two molecules are both two electron carriers. They carry two electrons per molecule. And notably, no protons are transferred to the intermembrane space in complex two. So this actually explains why you've probably heard before that NADH produces more ATP molecules per molecule than FADH2. And that's because NADH enters in complex one that will help to pump protons across the membrane. FADH2 enters in complex two that does not pump any protons into the intermembrane space. Okay, 
So now let's look at complex three, which is called coenzyme Q, cytochrome C oxidoreductase. Here, ubiquinol is oxidized to ubiquinone, and two molecules of cytochrome C in its iron three plus condition is reduced to cytochrome C Fe2 plus. So you can see from the change in charge from Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus that each cytochrome C molecule is accepting one electron. And that's notable because that means that cytochrome C is a one electron carrier, unlike all of the other electron carriers in the electron transfer chain. So two electrons are gonna be transferred from ubiquinol and one of each of those two electrons are accepted by a cytochrome C molecule. So basically just note that we need two cytochrome C molecules per ubiquinol for this step. And as part of this process, we will transfer four protons into the intermembrane space to help generate that proton gradient. So finally, we have complex four, which is also called cytochrome C oxidase. It's well named because here, cytochrome C, two of these molecules are gonna be oxidized from uh, Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. And these two electrons produced are gonna be used to reduce oxygen to water, and that's the last reduction oxidation reaction. And that's why we call oxygen the final electron acceptor. So here, two electrons are transferred from two molecules of cytochrome C to oxygen, and we also pump a couple protons into the intermembrane space. So uh, because we're still pumping protons from complex three and complex four, that's why FADH2 is still helpful for producing ATP, but it's just that NADH pumps more protons across the inner mitochondrial membrane, so NADH produces more ATP per molecule than FADH2. In the next video, we'll talk about how this proton gradient is used by ATP synthase to produce ATP.